first day. How about the first day? Scott, I understand you participated in some of those discussions between the two countries. How would you wrap it up for the first day? Uh, well, I did have a chance to, to participate in the innovation dialogue, which occurred on Sunday the, mm -hmm. uh, in advance of the SNED starting the, uh, this morning. And I would say the discussions were civil, uh, finding areas of cooperation, but also areas of disagreement. And many of these areas of cooperation and disagreement are the same ones that we've had for the previous dialogues. So not a whole lot of progress. Uh, so you could make it glass half full or glass half empty mm. on, you know, depending on which specific issue you look at. Mm. What about you, Mr. Yuan? Were you surprised by what uh, Mr. Kennedy just mentioned, half full, half empty, depends on what your perspective? Uh, I agree because it's uh, very hard to uh, agree on everything. Sometimes on agree on disagree also is a good you know, outcome. Mm. Uh, most impressive thing uh, this morning, uh, this, today's uh, session is opening remarks by President Xi Jinping. And he gave several very interesting remarks, which is uh, impressive for me. For example, he said in Asia Pacific, U.S. and China, we, have, we should have a mutual circle of uh, friends, other than use this friends to hedge against the other one. So we should have a win-win cooperation. And also he mentioned that uh, we need to stick to the new model of the relations. Even if uh, the American side is reluctant to repeat that uh, uh, logo and the concept, but from Chinese perspective, this is the only way and the right way to pursue. So he the very initiator of this uh, very good uh, doctrine and idea he sticks to uh, this very good specific which policy and which doctrine are you talking about uh, you mean from uh, the chinese president from chinese president i think uh, first of all he he thinks the right direction still is a long conflict and then uh, uh, confrontation mm. and the mutual respect that the women cooperation still the base for the future cooperation and also he mentioned that uh, we have a lots of uh, common interests to pursue. And also in Asia Pacific, even if we have some uh, dis differences, but we need to have a very good spirit to uh, mm. call Mr. Corporate. Kennedy, is that <clears throat> also what the American side would like to uh, see how the relationship would go? Is there enough ammunition to mm. feed that way in order to go forward in the same direction? I think ideally, the Americans would like to make cooperation and win-win the dominant theme of the relationship. Mm. Of course, though, the Americans, from everything we can tell from watching this dialogue and the run-up to it over the last several months, have a lot of, of uh, concerns about China on economic and security issues. And in fact, one of the dynamics of the SNED process is uh, the, the U.S. always seems to be like the guy chasing China, the woman around the table, trying to get commitments on certain things. And, and so that mm -hmm. leaves the U.S. in the position of, of making demands and China trying to focus more on cooperation. Uh, and so, and we've seen that again and again over the last uh, eight years of the dialogue. That certainly is a very interesting uh, analogy. I've never heard that before. <laughs> but, uh, but, but, but let's just be specific a little bit, whatever yes. analogy we use. Sure. First of all, South China Sea. It seems that the both sides have very different views. Sure. So with this strategic and economic dialogue now ongoing, what can the two sides do to bring themselves at least a little bit closer, or at least bring the communication channels a little bit more smoother, Mr. Sure. Kennedy? And then go to Mr. Sure, Black. sure. Mm -hmm. uh, I think this is a, a, a extremely complicated issue. Mm -hmm. It's not going to be solved uh, in this dialogue or this year. Uh, but The Hague is going to come down with a decision uh, in the next uh, several weeks or months. And I think one thing that the two parties could agree that whether, regardless of what the substance is, regardless of whether we think it's legitimate, let's not use that decision to change the context entirely to become confrontational, mm. all right? So let's be careful about whatever that decision says so that things don't get worse as a result uh, but Mr. of Mr. Kennedy, let me just clarify to our sure. audience. I mean, you are a very <clears throat> open-minded. Yes. You used to be in the government and now you're in the academic circle. Very open-minded uh, intellectual from the U.S. But uh, with many, there in the Capitol agree with you, for example, on the Capitol Hill, particularly in the Pentagon? Um, I can't speak for them, <laughs> uh, having been an academic before I worked in a, in a think tank. Yeah. Uh, but I, I can say, if there could be an agreement that 
uh, we don't take drastic actions as a result of whatever the decision is, mm. and that we look at the substance of what's discussed as opposed to where it came from, uh, then I think you'd actually see some parts of the, particularly the Obama administration, want to engage China more on this and even be open to China engaging the other claimants on a bilateral basis. All right, let's go to Mr. Yuan. Can we, from the Chinese side, be able to see, well, there are differences, but let's not just let these differences scramble the whole relationship downward, which seemed to be somewhat the case, as some argue, over the past few months, if not two years. Mm, I, I think so. I think we need to find this kind what of What does way. that need in order to make sure that's not happening that way? You know, today, the, the bad thing in U.S. and China relations, the relations are highly overshadowed by this single hot spot that South China Sea disputes. And uh, the, the day before yesterday, and the Shangri-La dialogue in uh, Singapore, yes. I think everybody you know, just focuses on this very single topic. It seems that this is the only topic of uh, U.S.-China relations. The SANED uh, today and tomorrow will show to the uh, world that uh, U.S. and China re relations are very comprehensive. Mm. We both cooperate and uh, uh, compete. And South China Sea is just one of many issues of a U.S. and China relation. We have lots of uh, in common, lots of uh, cooperative you know, areas. For example, today, we also see uh, uh, President Obama's uh, celebration uh, letter of this uh, opening remarks. He's, he used the very words you just mentioned. He said that we have lots of differences, but most important things that we won't let the differences dominate. Mm the U.S.-China relations. Most of you talk about common ground. Okay, let's look at what consists of this common ground. Trade is supposed to be mm. one of those mm. pillars, at least it used to be mm. supporting our relationship going forward. Is it still that way? Is it still the pillar or it has already become the challenge, Mr. Mm. Kennedy? Uh, it's both because uh, the 600 billion that we had in trade last year mm -hmm. and the 40 some billion in investment obviously benefited both sides, but there are winners and losers. Mm -hmm. I, um, and there's some disagreements, but I think if we can agree that we compete according to the same rules of the game, then actually the competition isn't so bad. And there's new areas that we are competing in beyond trade where the rules are less clear uh, related to currency and types of investment and the role of, say, security reviews. Uh, and so since we don't have clear rules there, that makes those more likely to be politicized mm. and hurt the rest of the relationship. So because the relationship is expanding, because China's becoming more powerful, this is a much more difficult relationship to manage. Mm. Well, we have some specific numbers coming from American businesses <coughs> talking about their feelings and sentiment toward China. Take a look at this. American Chamber of Commerce uh, in China, a nonprofit organization, of course, released a 2016 business climate survey after polling nearly 500 U.S. companies in this country. Around three-fourths of the companies expressed the hope that the bilateral investment treaty, the BIT, in other mm -hmm. words, uh, between the two countries could be signed before 2018. Almost 80% think BIT will increase the transparency and fairness of the business environment, and around three-fourths expected to help ensure a level playing field with domestic enterprises. Of course, this is at a time, Mr. Yuan, that both are having difficulties understanding some of the difficulties both governments set for one another when it comes to investment, and when it comes to trade. China complained about the anti-dumping issues coming from the U.S. about the steel, and the U.S. company talk about when are we going to invest equally into the Chinese market. So BIT is the word that would pop up. But how far is it from us? I mean, after all, Mr. Obama is very likely to leave the office very soon. Mm, but uh, one example is the WTO. WTO agreements, you know, generally has uh, achieved by uh, President uh, uh, Clinton and Chinese uh, counterpart. Mm. But the final signal, uh, signing, signal of the signing of the, the agreements is under Bush administration. So it doesn't matter if uh, Obama leave or not. But the most important thing, how can both countries achieve the agreements? Mm. After 24th round of a negotiation, I think we see some hope they were coming to the end of the FILO agreements. But mm. still, in the last minute, in the last mile, you know, it's the most hardest way to go. So still, 
Uh, this SNED, I think, uh, is uh, one good opportunity mm. to move a little bit uh, even uh, further. But uh, uh, if it uh, can be uh, finally you know, signed, uh, uh, reach agreements this time, as we need to wait and see. Mm. Well, uh, Mr. Yuan Peng is the expert uh, talking mm. about U.S.-China relations in China. Mm. He, of course, is very sophisticated enough to understand all of the complications as a result of the ongoing presidential mm. election mm. inside the United States. Certainly trade has been talked yes. about by both candidates coming from both parties. And we are seeing some very interesting phenomena when you're during mm -hmm. your primaries, of course. Uh, having said that, though, uh, how, what, how much impact would that have on the trade mechanism, for example, BIT, both sides already have in mind, and yet mm -hmm. still in this very difficult final hour or mm -hmm. the last mile? Well, obviously the, the campaign for the White House, both the Republican and Democratic side, have highlighted a lot of the concerns mm -hmm. uh, about trade and investment and the effect of globalization on jobs in the United States. Uh, but I think that reflects a broader trend as opposed to simply being a new issue that's come on the agenda by surprise. I think we're on a long march to mm -hmm. getting a BIT mm -hmm. uh, between the U.S. and China. And the word I hear more and more in the United States about the economic relationship is the word reciprocity. Mm -hmm. uh, and reciprocity actually is a code word for increasing barriers mm -hmm. or only making concessions if you receive the same exactly from the other side. And I think the, 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 there's a challenge between going in both directions mm -hmm. toward more greater openness or going toward reciprocity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But, but would that mean harsher uh, debates mm -hmm. and even uh, fights when it comes to trade, uh, Mr. Yuan. It can be, in a way, see eye to eye. Mm -hmm. If you move this way, I'm going to do exactly the same, probably put even more pressure onto your investment or trade into our country. I mean, both sides could do this. I think uh, now we are facing the new stage of the trade relations between our two countries. It's time for us to think about uh, mutual uh, investment. Mm -hmm. So BIT is a must for upgrade our trade relations in the next 20 years. But maybe it's in the wrong timing because now in the American election uh, season and both Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton, uh, because of the election phenomena, they both are very suspicious and hesitate to support the free trade relations. Right. So generally speaking and the protectionism today is more popular in the States than welcoming uh, BIT. E even uh, TPP, I'm afraid that can be finally passed okay. by the Congress under this administration.